Hello friends and welcome to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the anatomy of the trachea. To begin with, the trachea or the windpipe is a cartilaginous and membranous tube forming the beginning of the lower respiratory passages. It extends from the lower part of the larynx on a level with the 6th cervical vertebra to the upper border of the 5th thoracic vertebra where it divides into two bronchi, one for each lung, as you can see in this diagram. This is the trachea. Here in this diagram, you can see this is the pharynx, here is the larynx, here is the cervical vertebra. So, the trachea begins from the lower part of the larynx right here on a level with the sixth cervical vertebra and it extends to the upper border of the fifth thoracic vertebra. The trachea is nearly cylindrical and is kept patent that is unobstructed and open by the presence of C-shaped cartilaginous rings in its wall as you can see right here. Now these cartilages are deficient posteriorly and that part of the wall is flattened and made up of muscle and fibrous tissue. What you see right here is the anterior aspect of the trachea. Now this diagram shows a lateral view of the trachea right here. This is the anterior aspect, this is the posterior aspect. Anteriorly, you can see the blue cartilaginous rings and posteriorly, it is made up of muscle and fibrous tissue. Now, this soft posterior wall of the trachea allows the expansion of the esophagus during the passage of food. Here, you can see the esophagus. Realizing the important points under the introduction to the trachea, the trachea or the windpipe is a cartilaginous and membranous tube forming the beginning of the lower respiratory passages. It extends from the lower part of the larynx on a level with the 6th cervical vertebra to the upper border of the 5th thoracic vertebra where it divides into two bronchi, one for each lung. The trachea is nearly cylindrical and is kept patent by the presence of C-shaped cartilaginous rings in its wall. The cartilages are deficient posteriorly and this part of the wall is flattened and made up of muscle and fibrous tissue. The soft posterior wall allows expansion of the esophagus during the passage of foot. Now let's look at the dimensions of the trachea. The trachea is about 10 to 15 centimeters long. Its upper half lies in the neck and its lower half in the superior mediastinum. The external diameter measures 2 centimeters in males and 1.5 centimeters in females. And the lumen is smaller in living than in cadavers. In the child, the trachea is smaller, more deeply placed and movable than in the adult. And this is an important factor to consider while carrying out tracheostomy procedures. Now in this diagram, we can see the thyroid cartilage, the cricoid cartilage and the tracheal cartilages. Now let's learn about the cervical part of the trachea. The trachea begins at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage opposite the lower border of the sixth cervical vertebra as we had learned earlier. It runs downwards and slightly backwards in front of the esophagus and follows the curvature of the spine and enters the thorax in the median plane. Now in the neck, the trachea is comparatively superficial and has a few relations. Now before we look at the relations, Let's concise the important points that we learned under the dimensions of the trachea and the cervical part of the trachea. The trachea is about 10 to 15 centimeters long. Its upper half lies in the neck and its lower half in the superior mediastinum. The external diameter measures 2 centimeters in males and 1.5 centimeters in females. The lumen is smaller in living than in cadavers. And in the child, the trachea is smaller, more deeply placed and movable than in the adult. Looking at the cervical portion of the trachea, the trachea begins at the lower border of the cricoid cartilage opposite the lower border of the sixth cervical vertebra. It runs downwards and slightly backwards in front of the esophagus, follows the curvature of the spine and enters the thorax in the median plane. And in the neck, the trachea is comparatively superficial and has the following relations which we will be looking right now. Now let's learn about the relations of the trachea. First, let's look at the anterior relations. Anteriorly, the trachea is related to the isthmus of the thyroid gland that you see right here. 
covering the second and third tracheal rings. And in this diagram, you can see the inferior thyroid veins right here below the isthmus. Then comes a pretracheal fascia enclosing the thyroid and the inferior thyroid veins. Moving back to the previous image, you can see another relation that is the sternohyoid and sternothyroid muscles. Here you can see the sternohyoid muscle. Then comes the investing layer of deep cervical fascia and the suprasternal space. And finally comes the skin and the superficial fascia. Now looking at the posterior relations of the trachea. In this diagram we can see the esophagus which is the first posterior relation. Moving to this diagram. You can see the vertebrae as well as the longus coli muscle. This is the posterior view. So the second posterior relation of the trachea is the attachment of the longus coli muscle. Moving on to the next diagram, here you can see the trachea and here is the thyroid gland. Right here you can see the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is the third posterior relation of the trachea. Now looking at the relations of the trachea on each side, on each side it is related to the corresponding lobe of the thyroid glands and the common carotid artery within the carotid sheath that you can see right here. Here is a common carotid artery within the carotid sheath on either side of the trachea. Now concising the important points under the relations of the trachea, anteriorly the trachea is related to the isthmus of the thyroid gland covering the second and third tracheal rings, the inferior thyroid veins below the isthmus, the pretracheal fascia enclosing the thyroid and the inferior thyroid veins, the sternohyoid and sternothyroid muscles, the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and the suprasternal space and finally the skin and superficial fascia. Posterior relations include the esophagus, the longus coli muscle, the recurrent laryngeal nerve in the tracheoesophageal groove and on each side it is related to the corresponding lobe of the thyroid glands and the common carotid artery within the carotid sheath. Now let's learn about the vessels and nerves supplying the trachea. The trachea is supplied by branches from the inferior thyroid artery. Here you can see the inferior thyroid artery. So it will be supplying the trachea. Now in this diagram you can see that the veins drain into the left brachiocephalic vein that you see right here. Moving on to the lymphatics. The lymphatics of the trachea drain into the paratracheal and pretracheal lymph nodes. In this diagram, you can see the paratracheal lymph nodes right here. Moving on to the nerve supply, the trachea is supplied by parasympathetic and sympathetic nerves. The parasympathetic nerves are sensory and secretomotor to the mucous membrane and motor through the trachealis muscle and sympathetic nerves are vasomotor. Now, concising the important points under the vessels and nerves, the trachea is supplied by the branches from the inferior thyroid arteries. The veins drain into the left brachiocephalic vein. Lymphatics drain into the pretracheal and paratracheal nodes. The parasympathetic nerves are sensory and secretomotor to the mucous membrane and motor to the trachealis muscle and the sympathetic nerves are vasomotor. Finally, looking at the clinical anatomy related to the trachea, the trachea may be compressed by pathological enlargements of the thyroid, thymus, the lymph node and aortic arch and this causes dyspnea, irritative cough and often a husky voice. Now, tracheostomy is an emergency operation done in case of laryngeal obstruction. I hope you found this video helpful. To get the notes of trachea as well as other notes of anatomy, physiology and other health science subjects, visit my Instagram page, the link to which is given in the description below. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.